Welcome back guys, it's cringe back and we're back with quantitative reasoning prerequisites. Now contrary to what people believe about revising GCSE maths and a bit of A level maths, you're deceived. It is not that hard. The maths here is meant to be simple and essentially the applicable GCSE maths that everyone's sat. One of the facts that are necessary to learn before approaching quantitative reasoning questions be distance, time, their relationship as well as conversions between decimals, fractions and percentages as well as when to round, when not to round in terms of like upper bound, lower bound, area conversion and hopefully we'll get into that as that's usually where big mistakes are made. Now some more stuff that people need to know is the square numbers up to 15 as well as the cube numbers up to 11, how to add and subtract fractions. I'll link maths videos inside the description box so that the better teachers able to teach you maths like I'm no maths teacher and I'll tell you that straight up. But do remember, don't get bogged down into complicated mathematics. Do remember that this test is to test aptitude and essentially it's a speed test, a very fast paced exam. So it would never require something that's too intellectual in a sense where you have to put out a pen and paper and annotate for two, three minutes. It's not that sort of test. Now another area within the quantitative reasoning section that everyone needs to get better at is the estimation section. By this I mean being able to assume that certain values are never going to be correct. For example, if it was calculate the percentage increase and it gives a negative value value for the percentage increase it will make sense like them two are mutually exclusive so by default you would eliminate that value so you have three to choose from so from a percentage of success if you were to guess of 25% to a greater percentage of 33% now you may think it's not it's not that big of a difference one two questions answered correctly can mean a difference of a score of around 10 to 20 on the quantitative reasoning section or if not more so it's vital absolutely vital that you ensure that you maximize your chances of actually succeeding in this exam now one of the biggest tips of this section is that you practice every single maths question and I honestly emphasize this that you practice every single maths question under timed conditions now this section is not a section whereby you get it or you don't most people can answer all questions in this section it's just due to the the time restraint that they're unable to do so very very important that you practice under time conditions so that you're able to replicate the environment at home in the real test center by doing this you'll be able to ensure that the pressure doesn't overwhelm you within the exam I know that seemed like a lot of waffle but hopefully in my next video I'll be giving you the real tips that you probably came onto this course for and how they've boosted my grade unbelievably in the quantitative reasoning section. If you have very minimal time, I have an ebook that is present in the link description and that's my killer, killer, killer tips. Essentially, I explained them in the video, but there are some tips in there that I haven't really explained. Basically, catch you guys on the other side. Why is it hard for me?